So many business owners around the world struggle to get financing. It's something that I've struggled with for many, many years, but I finally feel like I've maybe cracked the system and I've got a cool few key points to share with you guys. Financing gives you the opportunity to buy in bigger volume, hierarchy expertise and outflow cash on a project which can be pivotal in success. Now, small disclaimer, I'm not saying that every business out there needs to go and get financing. It can be very risky doing this, so if you aren't prepared to manage and forecast your repayments on any financing that you get at this point, maybe just wait till you're ready. Before I dive in, let's just talk about the credit card component of this. With the financing that I got, it was pretty cool. They allowed me to split it between access facility, overdraft and credit card. And what I did is actually put most of it on the credit card, uh, which is perfect because it allows me the 55 days interest free uh, so that I can order stuff from overseas. And by the time it gets here, I can then pay it off. So it buys me that extra window of time, though I can change it and move it around. It's just uh, credit cards, maybe not the best uh, for all purposes of like long term asset uh, in, uh, investment. Um, like if you're buying a new product line, I would rather say go for an access facility. But yeah, I just wanted to give a small disclaimer on as to why it's all on the credit card. Now the first thing I want to discuss with regards to getting financing for your SME is probably the least popular thing to do for an SME and that is to keep records. The first thing you're going to do that the bank's going to ask when they ask you when you apply for financing is to show you their your records. And if you don't have meticulous day-to-day -day record keeping, bookkeeping, proper systems in place, unfortunately, that's already going to be, uh, you're gonna be out of the question for that. So just keep your stuff in an accounting system, make sure that you have these records to present to the banks and that will be a huge help. Number two is to have a dedicated business bank. I know when you're starting out, it makes so much sense just to run things through your personal account, maybe just keep records or have a sub account within like say Capitec. However, that's going to prevent you from even getting financing from the institutions like uh, Lululand and Bridgman, who use like an analysis on your bank statements. Uh, so you just submit your bank statements and then they're able to analyze your business transactions. But if you're using a personal account for your business transactions, they're not gonna be able to do that analysis. So that then eliminates you from even the easiest places to get financing from, because obviously those guys try a much higher interest, but they are much easier to acquire. Number three is to utilize supplier credit. So if you are in any sort of movement of goods, uh, or maybe even services, try to utilize the supplier credit available. So that means if you're, you're, you try to arrange with your suppliers and you say, hey, look, can I take those goods now and pay you in 30, 60, 90 days, whatever you can negotiate. And in the beginning, even if you just say, look, you know, this is, this is our country and whatnot, you know, you, uh, I understand there's a trust thing. Let's just start off small, you know, even if it's like the delivery part or even if it's like a few days and then work it up because each supplier that you get will act as a reference for the next supplier. And then these suppliers actually do go on some credit applications at banks. So they maybe just can see, okay, well, you don't have a large asset to secure um, against the loan. Why not, you know, they might contact some of your references to see, okay, is this guy a reputable payer? Before I get to number four, I just wanna tell you a little bit about Shopify and they are basically a easy way to start an e-commerce store and you can do this in like a matter of clicks. It's the best, best option. I have four Shopify stores running currently that generate revenue all the time and I never have to jump in and get on calls with technical uh, like web developers. You can basically do everything yourself. It's like a drag and drop system. So if you guys are looking at like getting started on a e-commerce store, for instance, or drop shipping, definitely check out Shopify, even on like a point of sale system for uh, small walk-in places. It's great for that. It's so robust, it's used worldwide. They're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It's definitely the best way to go. Watch out for things like WooCommerce and WordPress. They can be very cheap initially, but you end up paying for that in other things like time, stress, uh, reliability, and just all of those things. It, it's from someone who's done both. Let me tell you, Shopify is 100% worth it. Right, so number four. These are the things that I'm like a little bit on edge for recommending. Lululand, Bridgement, there's loads of these like 
short-term lenders, I think they kind of go between 300, uh, like 50,000 up to like maybe 3 million uh, in terms of lending. The paybacks are pretty aggressive. It seems to be most of them do like a two to three week payback period on any loans that you take, which is quite um, interesting. So it's like you basically start paying it back straight away. Uh, the interest rates generally very high, much above what you would get at a formal institution. However, it's so easy to get. They just, you know, look at your bank statements or you connect these days, you can connect Zero or QuickBooks into their system. It pulls your bank transactions and then like looks at all of your like assets, cash that you have, and it can tell you how much you're eligible for. I've used it a few times. It's pretty good. Money's like near instant. And uh, yeah, you just have to know exactly your costs involved in it and how you're going to pay it back. Uh, it's, it's very lucrative. Uh, or it has been very lucrative for me. And it was definitely pivotal, pivotal in getting financing from other places. And yeah, that, on that, it obviously goes on your credit record, these smaller loans, which you can then use when you apply to the bigger institutions that you can then obviously say, look, you know, I've proven myself at paying back uh, smaller loans. So it works. Lastly, number five. And before I jump into that, I also want to say if you have some suggestions of your own, uh, there may be some more veteran business owners watching this and they may have some information to share. Pop it in the comments. This video is meant to be something that people can find for years to come. Hopefully it can guide them. Hopefully it can stimulate some ideas. Hopefully it can help someone get a little bit further. And I'm not discounting that there are people out there with great either ideas and suggestions and pointers. So put those in the comments. It'll help someone down the line and it'll also maybe help me as well. Uh, it's always good to learn. All right. So number five and also not a like yay one um, is that I highly recommend getting proper financial statements done by a accounting firm get them signed off the banks will take like you know you can go into QuickBooks or Zero or Sage and just pull a profit and loss and balance sheet and give that to the bank they'll accept that but they much more likely to accept uh, like audited or just uh, presented financial statements signed off it's just like a whole different thing. They tie up your assets, you know, they, they sort of close all the uh, inventory accounts off and they verify a few balances. It's just like a much more professional setup. So uh, I would highly recommend doing that. It's not going to set you back as a, like that much as a small business. It sucked. I remember like vividly hating paying it. Um, you can get, they don't have to be the best as well, um, you know. Uh, try to get them as accurate as possible but you don't have to go to like a huge audit firm to get it done like it should be like five ten grand um to get it done it's worth it if you can and then you have it there and you can present it at any moment and it's good for record keeping into the future you know if you have five years of financial statements that's going to be a great thing for applying for financing from an institution all right so guys uh once again be careful when you get financing uh you aren't just getting money for free you have to pay it back and make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in another video oh and if you guys want to see uh, a bit of a video on how i started a business with a credit card initially and it had like a 500 rand limit and i was using that to buy stuff and then to sell and then to buy and then to sell before i obviously and then i'd sell it in the period where it was interest free and uh yeah it escalated for years and years and i still kind of do it uh, a little bit um, and yeah, uh, just check out this video here and you'll definitely like that. Cool. Thanks guys.